Welcome back guys, this is part 3 of the Jersey Swap Tutorial 2.0 um, and I'm going to jump right back into it with the helmet. I have this duplicated layer labeled helmet already. I'm going to select the layer mask. Again, just like all the other parts, we're going to go around this helmet uh, shell portion with the pen tool fairly precisely. All right, I'm just going to do the uh, the main area of the helmet so far. I'll get the parts inside the face mask later. Uh, all right, so I have the um, the base part of the helmet selected here. Um, the most important part about a helmet is finding a picture that you can work with. I think this one here of Jordan Howard should be uh, close enough. Um, the most important thing is, is having the main angle. Um, I'll show you um, as we do it. But warping is a huge, huge portion of the helmet part. Um, if you can, if you can warp well uh, doing the helmet, then you can use uh, helmet pictures that are not as perfect. Which sometimes helmets are hard to find. So uh, if you can perfect the warping portion of this, then that is a, a great strength to have in jersey swapping. Um, just being able to to use more. Uh, less perfect images of of the helmet and be able to work with that. It's a tremendous benefit. So I have this selected and cut out, duplicated. I'm going to clip it to the helmet layer. Of course we're going to move that over to the approximate positioning that we're looking for here. And as you can see it is a little bit um, off in terms of the angle. We're not matching up with the uh, helmet bumper name tag piece here and we just uh, the the shell doesn't quite line up so what I'm gonna do is go into the warp tool here and I'm gonna work on fixing that so you're just kinda gonna wanna take these edge pieces and you're gonna wanna manipulate them to get the proper alignment in terms of the rest of the helmet keeping this uh, Riddell speed like uh, this little cutout here. Keeping that in the proper shape is really important. You can hold the option and click anywhere in the warp uh, area to manipulate more precisely just to keep that properly shaped. Um, and you can always hit enter to finish that uh, warp session. And then you can go back and warp it again from this new shape and you get a different, uh, sort of different handles and it'll warp differently than it uh, it would with the original one and if you keep adding new warp points. But uh, anyways, this, uh, this part looks pretty good to me for now. I think that is probably passable. Um, but as you can tell, it doesn't quite match the color of the jersey here. So what I'm going to do, my first uh, quick fix attempt here, is going to be to go into Camera Raw, Filter, and um, take the hue portion of this and take those purples and move them a little bit more towards the blue and the blues towards the aqua. And we get a little bit closer. I think that's actually good. The helmet's a little bit darker than the jersey here, so I'm going to take a curves layer, clip it there slightly, very, very slightly move this up until I'm satisfied with that result and uh, there we go I think that base part of the helmet looks pretty good we're pretty closely matched with all these portions um, one last thing it's a little bit noisy on this helmet so I'm gonna go back into camera raw filter again zoom in so I can see all that noise I'm gonna go to detail and just noise reduction probably about 45 maybe 50 um, but do that just to, to get it a closer match because this picture is very, very soft. Um, but there we go. There's the base part of the helmet. The next thing I'm going to take care of is the visor clips. Everybody uses these Oakley visor clips now. So I found this picture of Tariq Cohen with the visor clips facing about the same direction as Justin Fields right now. And I'm going to just select these, duplicate that. Select the other one, duplicate it as well, and then I'm going to position them over those clips that uh, on the Jordan Howard helmet that we just used. I'm going to actually merge these together just to keep them in the same place. 
move it down to this helmet group that I am starting. Uh, transform it up here and then I should be able to adjust this properly to fit in the correct space. Again, I, I sort of see a, uh, a slight uh, portion of this helmet that's uncovered so as I said making adjustments all the way through uh, all I'm gonna do go to the helmet layer take my clone stamp tool actually and I'm going to just fill in this part that seemed to be missed when I warped the helmet uh, but that should be fine there we go just get that filled in you can take the brush here to fill in this part and make sure that everything gets covered up and there we go so there's the visor clips and the helmet complete uh, at least the base part of the helmet the next thing I'm gonna do obviously we need to fill in these gray areas uh, from the shell of the helmet that we didn't cover with this uh, main area so what I like to do for this is again go to that camera raw filter and I'm gonna zoom in on this part and I'm going to take the exposure and bring that down a little bit. And for a gray helmet like this, changing the color of these areas is uh, pretty simple as you can just take the color dropper in the brush tool, select any part of the helmet, fill in with the foreground color, and then I would set this to color. Um, and then I'm going to take the pen tool and fill in these gray areas as closely as possible this last part of the shell of the helmet just make sure that you don't miss any any of these gaps in between the portions of the face mask make sure you are on the helmet layer what I do for these is just hit command I and invert those um, and then I'll do that for all of these gaps. Alright, I think I covered all that, but I did notice something while I was doing that. First off, I'm just going to create this group with a helmet to keep it organized and label that helmet, but I wonder if you guys noticed, the same thing I noticed while I was doing that, is that I forgot a portion of the jersey. Uh, I left it red, and I'm going to need to fix that now. So we have these, uh, these gray portions where you can see the original jersey. Of course we need to cover that up. So what I'm going to do is just select it with the pen tool. Make sure you're on the jersey uh, layer mask layer. Make the selection command I. Make that blue as well. And get this part. Just fill in all those gaps. So, uh, I, of course I forgot that. But no, no harm, no foul because I saw it and we fixed it just then. So there we go. We're good with that. These uh these gray areas on the gray or the the red areas on this gray face mask, that's fine for now uh because we're going to recolor the face mask in just a second anyway. So, now that we had that fixed, I'll close the jersey layer, make another one. Guess what this one's going to be? Whoops. It's going to be face mask and um what I'm going to do first is that camera raw filter uh because this is going to need to be darker to get that navy look. So I'm just going to bring that down. That should work. Um, I want those highlights to still be there a little bit, so I don't want to make it too dark. And then what I'm going to do is take this gradient map that I've been working with this whole time from the jersey layer, copy that, paste it on the face mask, um, and clip it there. So it looks a little too bright, so I'm going to take the curves and darken that up a little bit and try and keep those those highlights a little bit brighter um, but we're gonna start there for now uh, what I'm gonna do is select this layer mask here shift F5 and I'm gonna fill with the foreground color I'm gonna make that whole thing visible but then I'm just gonna hit command I make the entire thing invisible I'm going to hover over this layer mask from the original cutout layer I'm gonna select it I'm going to leave that there, and then I'm just going to brush in the entire face mask. Uh, I like to do this this way because um, the pen tool can be a little bit tedi tedious for the face mask, and it doesn't have like very hard edges, so everything's soft. So if you work with a smaller, soft brush, you can get a little bit closer to the, uh, to the edges of the face mask, and you don't have to worry about the hard 
uh, edges and missing little parts of it while you're working on that. So I'll speed this up and I'll see you guys when I'm done uh, masking out the face mask and see if we have to make any adjustments. All right, so I got that main part of the face mask cut out, and something, uh, one last thing that's important to remember, don't forget to do this, is these, under these clips, you want to change the color of that too, especially if it's, uh, if the previous face mask was colored like yellow or red or something. Uh, so what I normally do is just take like a 50% or so brush and go over those portions, especially the ones that are very visible like this. Um... But yeah, that, it's, it's important to remember that not too hard to, uh, to do. Uh, and again, I kind of realized that this is a little bit too dark, I think. So I'm gonna, instead of uh, changing this curves, I, what I like to do is add another one just to brighten up that a little bit. And now I think it may be a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to take the hue and set adjustment layer and desaturate that a little bit. So I think that uh, that face mask looks pretty good. Um, so I will be moving on to the chin strap here. So again, I'm going to group these all up into the face mask layer just to keep that all organized and together. Um, so onto the chin strap, I'm going to create another layer just for the sake of keeping things clean and organized. So I'm going to do chin strap. Um, and then as we have been doing this entire time, I'm going to just cut out this part with the pen tool. No worry about the uh, the actual uh, straps that attach to the helmet when they, they don't have any writing on them or anything so we can just leave those be. So I'm just going to select this portion that's in the uh, open portion of the face mask and not hidden by the helmet. Um, so there we go. Again, this is under the face mask, so you don't need to be super precise on those parts that are covered. You just want to get most of the uh, portions that you can see in this area, especially the ones that are colored. Um, so there we go. We're going to select that, do our old shift command I, and delete everything else. Um, so the thing about NFL face ma or chin straps, they have to be white. Everybody in the NFL wears a white one, so these red ones in college, they don't work. Um, so he couldn't wear a blue one or an orange one, so we just got to make it white. Fortunately, there's a nice tool, just a black and white tool here. We can uh, use this red slider here to brighten that up a little bit. Not too bright. But there we go. That honestly seems to be uh, sufficient enough for me. There's not any crazy noise or uh, anything like that. But one thing that is good to do is... Uh, to add a little bit of color. You don't want it to be completely flat black and white. So I'm going to make a color layer. Keep this low opacity. I selected something from the jersey just as a little bit of a reflection and I'm going to draw that in there. Barely noticeable but it does make a little bit of a difference when you see it. So there we go. That is enough for the chin strap part. Pretty easy when you have a color like red to brighten up like that. All right, moving on, something that I don't want to forget is to clean up like these little details, the, rem the remains of red or any of the hue left by the red parts that we've covered up or something like the uh, headband that he wears underneath. So what I'm going to do, I'm not even going to create another layer for this. I'm just going to have a blank layer clipped to the regular layers. I'm going to change it to hue. And then I'm a, for these for these parts I'm going to take the jersey color. It's a little bit too saturated, but basically what I'm going to do is take this this color here and brush over these these red parts to eliminate that um, that obstruction from the red because red is a very uh, obtrusive color and including a portion like this that we don't want to be red we can make it more orange like the skin 
or something like this could go a little bit more towards blue since it's right near the chin strap. Again, this isn't like perfect, but when you zoom out all the way to here, nobody can really see that, so it's not really worth spending too much time on doing that perfectly. Um, I'm going to do the this uh, headband underneath, make that blue. It's a little too bright, so uh, what I'm going to do instead is make a black and white layer, and I'll just make it black. Um, it's just going to blend into the shadows underneath. Uh, I'm going to make the red a little bit lighter, darker, I mean, uh, to make that black headband underneath. You can barely even tell it's there now. Um, but I'm going to use this same uh, black and white layer on a little bit lower opacity just to brush over these chin strap uh, clips or face mask clips and get rid of that red area that's underneath those. Um, all right, so looking pretty good there. Uh, there's one more thing to do before we move into the background and the color correction, uh, and that would be the football itself. So in the NFL, they don't use these footballs with the stripes on them. It's different from college, but uh, this one should be pretty easy to change. You just have to find a picture that will work. Uh, I have this one of Mitchell Trubisky, but I don't think that'll be perfect. But I did find this other one of Mitch Trubisky that I think will work. It's a little bit low quality, but for the purposes, I think it should be fine. And again, I'm just going to cut this out with the uh, pen tool. And I'm not even going to fuss about like the fingers or anything because I think those might get covered up anyway. And if not, I'll be able to clone stamp those out pretty easily. But I just needed a football from a similar angle. It's facing almost straight towards us. It doesn't have to be perfectly lined up with the uh, seams and the uh, the laces or any of that as with this one. It just, the lighting needs to match a little bit closely. So we have the nose pointing towards the camera. So this should work uh, pretty well. We're going to be able to cover up most of these fingers, if not all of them anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is just try and get the size of this right, and then I should be able to uh, warp it a little bit in order to get the edges to match up just by going to edit and warp as we've been doing. So I'm just going to move this a little bit outward to cover up that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is um, add a little bit of definition for the seams here because they stick out from the ball. Um, but I'm just going to make a selection make a selection and fill that with foreground color which is white just to have that little bump which should work fine. Of course we got these fingers here which is a problem so what I'm going to do is just get rid of this football layer for now and I'm going to go trace around the, uh, the fingers of Justin Fields um, real quick all right, now that I've gone around that, I'm just going to make a selection here and add a layer mask. Then I'm going to invert it so we have the uh, the fingers cut out. And as we see, the the lighting's a little bit off. Like we have it coming from the top, but it's a little bright where the fingers are. So what I'm going to do is just um, clip this to the ball layer. I'm going to select this layer mask here so we can only draw on parts that are uh, not on the hand obviously. So I'm just going to take a very low opacity, maybe 10 uh, brush here and add a little bit of shadows especially under this thumb so we can see like contact shadows of him holding the ball. Not too uh, not too wide but um, pretty pretty defined underneath the fingers and on this finger so we can just tell that that he's holding it which looks a little bit better I might lower the opacity just a little bit there and that seems seems pretty alright it's a little bit wonky but um, the ball can be uh, difficult sometimes uh, I don't know what this is here but I don't really like the, the way that white part looks, so I'm just going to clone stamp that out. And there we go. Um, maybe what I should do is go back to the hue layer here that I have. 
And on these these hands, I'm going to get rid of this red part since it's not quite as saturated as the ball was in the original picture. And there we go. So that looks pretty good to me. Maybe just a little bit more shadowing over on this left side of the ball on the bottom. Oh, that's forgot to make sure the opacity is brought down again. And I'm just going to add a little bit more shadowing on the bottom there to make it darker. And there we go. That should be it for the swap. Um, normally I'd be taking a little bit more time on everything, but I want to be uh, as succinct as possible when I'm going through a tutorial like this. So this is pretty much the gist of, uh, of what I do for every time. But of course, the more time you spend on it, the more de the attention to detail that you pay, uh, you're going to get a better result. So that is uh, that's good for the the swap portion. So what I'm going to do now is select all of these layers that I've been working on this whole time, put them in a group, and just call it swap. That way I have the entire thing. And I can uh, now put this on a background and do the color correction. So I will be right back when I find a, uh, a background that I can work with for this. Alright, so I'm back. I got this picture of Tariq Cohen here. A uh, bright sunny day in the in uh, Soldier Field, um, so it's a it's a little bit darker in this helmet uh, reflection, but the photo is pretty light. But I'll show you how to how to kind of work with this. Um, but this picture uh, requires a little bit of clone stamping, but it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, sometimes you can try and just use the polygonal lasso tool here to go around the player that you need to remove. Pretty uh, broadly, it doesn't need to be precise whatsoever but you can you can cover them up whoops that should be okay um, and you can try that content aware fill and see how that turns out uh, obviously it's a little patchy here but if I put the picture of Justin Fields on top of it that actually looks pretty good because uh, he covers a lot of it what I'm gonna do is change this a little bit to make it bigger cover up even more make it sure it's centered so that's good um, and then all I need to do is touch up these areas that were a little bit blurry uh, so I'm gonna select this background layer use my clone stamp tool and I'm just going to try and get some definition in those blurry areas that already got um, removed um, and obviously there's like a shoe or a shoelace there so I'm gonna get rid of that or try to so there we go uh, maybe a little bit more there try and get that as, as little bit uh, blurry as possible but there we go I think that works so again the lighting's a little bit different so all I'm gonna do is make a curves layer on this background and bring that down just a little bit and I think that makes it a lot closer to what we're looking for. Maybe a little bit brighter. And then I'm going to go into this and maybe mess around in the color mixer again because the blue is a little bit off. So I'm going to turn down the luminance there. And I'm going to take these uh, like pinkish red orange colors and just make sure that those turn a little bit more orange than they are red or pink and I'm also gonna drop the luminance on those and maybe a little bit on the grass but uh, overall that's kind of what I'm looking for and I actually might need to brighten it a little bit now but just uh, working working around with these adjustments uh, on the background to sort of match up the lighting a little bit kind of works. Uh, it just has to be close because what I'm going to do next is um, is add a little bit of... First I'm going to decrease the vibrance a little bit, I think. But then I'm going to add some dramatic lighting, which I've been doing recently. Um, obviously you can do the color correction and the lighting however you want to, whatever, whatever you uh, prefer for your swaps, but uh, this is just something that I've been doing lately and I've been enjoying a lot. So now I can get rid of all these uh, other layers of the resource images that I had. Um, and I'm going to start by adding my light source. 
which by looking at the picture is going to come pretty much from the from the top um, almost in the center but I'm going to kind of make it arching the entire top really a little bit more intense from the left side and then what I'm going to do is just add a little bit I'm going to lower the opacity and then a little bit of shadow on this right side on the bottom um, so now I can be a little bit dramatic with the uh, with the lighting on the player uh, so the first thing I would take another curves layer clip it to the swap group and bring it down to get some some darker tones then you're gonna command I to invert it and I usually take a brush of around 35 and maybe 80 and then I'm going to go around and darken these areas that are darker or ones that I want to be darker based on the area that I put the lighting. So I'll just go around and do that. I'll speed it up and I'll be back when I am finished with that. All right, so those are that's the base of the uh, the darks that I'm going to do. So next I want to get a base for my brights. Um, I'm going to just do another curves layer and bring up the brightness pretty intensely since I am working with a lower opacity brush. I'm going to invert this one as well and then I'm of course going to do the same thing that I did with the other one instead making the the lighter areas light or the areas that I want to be lighter based on the lighting a little bit lighter. Alright so I got that base layer for my lighter parts. Now I'm going to do uh, just another curves layer for the face because it seems a little bit dark and flat to me right now. So I'm going to take another adjustment layer and bring up those uh, those curves. Um, and I'm just going to work in this area with the eyes and the nose and just the face in general to kind of give that a little bit more depth. Even though it might not be completely realistic to have it uh, lit up like this, I think it'll be good if I can get it right to, to have a little bit more light on the face. Um, it looks kind of weird. So... Instead, I'm going to kind of get rid of a little bit of these lighter layers and keep the face a little bit darker since it, it's covered uh, from the light source by the shadow. Maybe just in general, kind of a soft lower light in this area to keep the face emphasized, but not too much. So I think that probably works about there. Um, last thing is to add some more intense uh, darks and lights on on those edges a little bit. So I'm going to use an exposure layer here. I'm going to bring down the exposure, uh, invert it like we've been doing, and then on these lower parts of the leg and the uh, bottom of the feet and maybe the arm and the towel, stuff like that, like over here, uh, just darken it even a little bit more just to give even more depth. Maybe add a little bit of a shadow by the head. And there we go. And lastly, I'm going to add just a blank layer with a white brush. I'm going to go very, very lightly around some of these top edges to reflect that, that strong light source from the top left. Alrighty, and now there's just a few more final steps here. Uh, first, I'm going to add another blank layer above everything else, including the, this lighting layer that I have here. Uh, what I'm going to do is shift F5 and I'm going to fill it with 50% uh, gray. Then I'm going to go to filters, noise, and add noise. And I'll put it about 12.5% on the uniform uh, distribution and monochrome. And then I'm going to see that added grain there. And I'm just going to put this on soft light here just to add a little bit of a grain filter here to make it seem a little bit imperfect because if you make it seem too uh, smooth and perfect it kind of really seems uh, fake and it you know it just throws you off a little bit uh, so of course what you don't want to forget add a watermark in there I like to use the font tungsten uh, tungsten bold so that's just me however you want to do it I'll put it in the bottom corner I make it small but you can make it however big you want some people like to put it near the player some put it on top of the player whatever I just like to put it in the corner a little bit smaller just to, to keep it out of the way. Um, but that's good. That's, we're, we're done with the uh, this part of the 
swap pretty much everything just one last thing is I'm going to exit out of this I'm gonna hit open I'm going to click on this file but not open it yet and then I'm going to go to camera raw here opening camera raw open that and then once that opens I can again use some of these adjustments to uh, to make the colors and the lighting what I want it to be so I'm gonna increase the exposure and the contrast a little bit kinda just play around with things until I'm happy with the result um, I have a bunch of presets usually uh, but you can you can play around with this it, it all depends on what kind of look you're going for um, and there's plenty plenty of flexibility with this there's so many options you just have to play around with it, see what you like. Um, uh, using the, the color mixer, huge part of uh, all the swaps that I do and all this, the uh, color correction, it just is such a good tool to, to put those finishing touches on and get that look that you really want. Um, so yeah, I think this is sort of what I'm looking for. Then I'm just going to save image and save it to, to my files, and that should be it. So I'll throw the uh, full resolution of the swap on the screen right now. Here's what we got. Uh, it was a, a great uh, process going through it with you. I'm happy and excited to release this tutorial 2.0. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you made it all the way here, uh, seriously, I appreciate it, and I will see you guys next time. What's up guys again, this is Joe. Um, I just wanted to take a moment at the end of this video to say thank you for all your support. Uh, for those of you who watched this entire tutorial series, I can't express how much I appreciate it. I love sharing the knowledge with you guys and I hope plenty of you take inspiration from, uh, from my swaps and learning how to do it. I hope I can help as many of you as possible. Um, I just wanted to, to, to do a little plug real quick. Uh, I got these gradient map shirts, plenty of other shirts. Uh, uh, merch like stickers with the logo on it plenty of that on my teespring store which is now integrated with instagram so you can view it straight on my instagram profile if you click the instagram shops icon uh, or i'll put the link in the description of this video for the teespring store um, again i really really appreciate the support and uh, thank you so much it's incredible